um, from a tax administration perspective? Is there an opportunity here? Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here and to be part of this conversation. Housing is very key. I was amazed by the statistics. Seven out of 10 people are let, renting, and uh, this would be really the opportunity for, for government, for the tax policy makers, for tax collectors like us, to be able to tap into this revenue and get it into the economy. Um, it's also important to note that the housing sector contributes 11% of the GDP, which is also another very important statistics for us. Uh, what comes out is that in the entire value chain, we are keen as tax people to, to understand how tax plays into this. So when you talk about the purchase of land, at purchase alone, uh, we look at taxes around there. For example, when you are transferring your land, we have stamp duty, which is also a charge that we give to government for, for giving your title to that credibility that it deserves. We also have a capital gains tax uh, payable by the person disposing of this property. And uh, that one is at 30%, but we remove the cost. And even in the cost, the law now provides that we index this cost you could have bought your land some time back, and the value now is too big. Like you've seen the statistics again, we have the highest cost of land here. And that is supposed to translate into also high tax. So uh, in, in, in policy, we are cognizant of that. I could have bought my land, say, at, at about uh, 10 years ago, or even 15. Within around Kampala here, even if it is Namgongo or Chira, or even a Ginger Road. Now it's almost a billion, and I'm selling it. That gain is too much. So we index the cost for purposes of inflation so that the gain becomes smaller, and then we tax it at 30%. And uh, so those are the things that inform. So this very high cost of land creates tax evasion. Somebody will not see a billion coming through and you have to pay URA all this, 300 million, or it looks quite huge. So uh, those are the conversations that we are seeing and uh, it's, it's really what informs the, the tax administration. We are also looking at the fiscal plans and the coordination of the ecosystem. As tax people, we are interested in supporting the planning around the housing sector. We want to be able to locate these buildings, these apartments. We want to even know that actually a building in this area is for this type of purpose. And that type of segmentation creates very good precision in us determining the taxation of, of uh, these buildings. Uh, so so that, that really becomes a problem. And then also the issue of ownership, just to take you back again. Ownership changes all the time. And even when it changes, the ability for the regulators to be notified of that change. You, last year, the owner of this building was maybe Mr. Musoke. This year, it's another Haji somebody. So that, that change of ownership and without proper notice distorts the taxation. Before you were supposed to collect from this person who has already sold off the building, and, and the ability for us to have a network. We need to talk, to have a common system. If, if Minister of Lands is, for example, transferring this building to another person, the tax policy people, the URA people should be notified. And all other people, the banks, we have all these other people who are part of the system. The bank should also know that this system has been transferred. This guy can be having a mortgage. So that, that interlinkage is very, very important for all of us. Adulteration of materials. Uh, illicit trade is something that we are very keen in URA to know about because it directly impacts on the taxation. These illicit people who do the trading affect the other people who are doing the right thing. So uh, because of all this, we don't even get the tax. We don't get the tax in it and uh, We've, if we've, we've, we started introducing tax stamps to, to say 
uh, cement materials and generally construction materials. This stamping, we are working together with National Bureau of Standards. Actually, this, I think those are also very key people that you should invite next time. Mm -hmm. National Bureau of Standards should help us to monitor this quality. So we are starting, we've started with the stamps, mm -hmm. but again, we get some of these players not stamping their goods. They, 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 a lot of confusion and because of that, tax is lost. Because of that, me as a builder, as an investor, I don't get value. And then I'm also looking at the regulatory mandate. Not all is done professionally. Right from valuation, when I'm buying this land, I need a proper valuer to help me. I need the surveyor to assist me to title this land. I need the engineer, a professional engineer with the right skill set to advise me on what type of building I should put on what type of land. All these play very important roles. And then we are looking at also the banks, the insurers, and then now the, the legal constraints, and lastly, the tax people. You want to know all this information, and all this should be regulated. If we have this regulated, it will inform our decisions into the land question and the housing question. So uh, tax policy recognizes the cost of housing. And in, the, in computing the taxes, we, we take care of that. We, we take note of the fact that in the last three years, the tax laws have been changing so much on, on rental tax. And there must be a lot of confusion around that. But we look forward to a more stable fiscal regime now, uh, following the changes this year. Uh, but we now distinguish between the, the rental tax for an individual and that of a company. And for an individual, we are now taxing at 12%. And in that 12%, we remove tax-free income of 2,820,000, which is an average of 235 per, per month. 235,000 per month. We are keen to simplify the taxation of rental income. Uh, Dr. Mvala was talking about the ability of that landlord, that semi literate landlord, who, who really may not afford the services of a tax agent, of an accountant to file the returns, to be able to just file this return using his phone to pay tax. Actually, when you pay that tax, what you pay is what becomes your tax filing. As simple as that, to be able to use your phone, like the way you transfer mobile money to, from the bank to URA and vice versa, that is what we are looking into. And we want to work with the, uh, our stakeholders, like the banks, Bank of Uganda, the national payment platform, to be able to do this to simplify taxation, to simplify compliance, and to ease tax collection. Very, very important. So uh, why we even reduce the rate to 12% is that if I've got my rent of 1 million, and you are saying give government 120, now when you even remove the 2 million, it becomes the effective tax rate comes much lower. So this should be able to enhance compliance. Why we are interested in this discussion, in this conversation is because if the housing, it, if this housing question is improved, is if it grows, it has a direct impact into economic development and subsequently into contributing into the tax uh, revenue that we surely need for our country. The other issue that we also need is that can we have quality being at the top of all the professionals that serve in this housing sector? I've already talked about that. How can we regulate the type of professionals that we have? You get a surveyor who transfers for you this land. He even discovers the land was already sold off to another person and connives with the owner of the land. Th that type of quack professionals that we have in this value chain, mm. how can the regulation be able to pick those out? And we have the right people serving in this market. So quality becomes a mark that is very key for everyone in this value chain. Uh, the other one is also about ownership being very key and ensuring that data and technology is very, very important. I'm happy that you are discussing tomorrow data. That is the real driver of this 
uh, equation because we want information to be readily available that I'm able to ac easily access this. Uh, most importantly, we also talked about ownership. How can we ease ownership and how can we make it cheaper for people to own? Uh, in terms of uh, ensuring that the process is eased up, technology can drive that, it will be much faster. Uh, the government people should be easily accessible to support people entitling the land. Um, are we getting the right tax? No, but working towards it. No, because we cannot locate most of these people. We are working with technology companies and using our technology to locate, working with KCCA to locate property and buildings. But like I was telling you, there are so many unmarked buildings. They are, the only marked place could be Kololo or where you can really get Plot number this and the, the what? The, 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 if, if you are to use Google Maps and use the pin, the pin takes you to a gate and the gate is a residential home. Yet in the, in the paper, you know it's a commercial building. So it is really very confusing for us to start tracing these people. Uh, we are working towards that. We also have what we call electronic fiscal receipting and invoicing solution. Which, which is happening now. Uh, that one is supposed to help us. If you are able to issue these electronic invoices in our system, then we can be able to trace you up. But many of these real estate people, many of these landlords are not there. And then uh, the other issue that we have is the fraud around declarations of the actual rent paid, especially commercial property in downtown. All those arcades are owned by people who are paying like maybe 20% of or 30 of what would be the actual rent. If, um, if I have a business in one of the arcades, I go and pay my rent, but the, tenor, the landlord tells you, you will only receive this, the other one, if you don't want, you can vacate. And this is a very strategic building. These are things that really make our tax co collection very difficult. But we are engaging and we are investigating we are asking Ugandans to be patriotic in paying our taxes. Let's love our country and let's be part of this growth of this country. If you want government to support in, in their part in providing the social services, let's do our part to pay the equal share of this tax. So uh, on incentives, uh, we, we, we consider these incentives uh, in, 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 in the rental tax policy. Uh, especially for companies, what we are now doing is that when you are paying your tax, we give you an allowance of 50% of the revenue to compensate for the cost that you incur in running that business. So if you have maybe your rental revenue of 100 million, we give you a deduction of 50% and only tax the 50% the at 30%. So the effective tax rate comes to about 15%, which is very, very fair. And uh, for non-residents who have property here, we also tax those ones at 15% of their gross rental income. And uh, it's a final tax. That one is even more simplified. But the tenant is supposed to declare that tax to the Uganda Revenue Authority. So uh, policy generally is very, very important. But what I can say is that uh, to sum up this, rental taxation or property taxation or taxes around the housing project are very key. We look at so many taxes. There is stamp duty, there is income tax. If, for example, you have vanished apartments, we expect you to, to pay income tax and not rental tax. If you are collecting rental income, we will expect you to pay rental income either as an individual or as a company. We also have withholding tax obligations around this area. And then uh, most importantly, is the, it's a very important sector. We have not taxed. We don't think we have really got the maximum out of it, but we are on it. Currently, we are doing a lot of uh, field work to find out where these premises are located, but still with a lot of challenges. If this conversation is to, to succeed, we are the best to benefit from it because if we are able to locate these buildings, we are able to locate these owners, 
This will be very good for tax administration and for policy makers. We are ready to work together with you because whatever decisions come through this discussion, through this conversation, will inform us in policy makers, in policy decisions that will support in enhancing compliance and making sure that when you put through that investment and pay government that 12%, you feel that I'm really part of this Ugandan tax revenue contribution. Thank you so much and a very good day to all of you. Thank you.